Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I'm going to review my spring garden and, and talk about what worked and what didn't work. What was a success and what was a failure. Come along with me. All right, well, today when I'm recording this is the first day of meteorological summer, June the 1st. Um, I think astronomical summer is on the 20th. I don't know. It's hot. And right now it is almost 90 degrees in my garage. It's only 55% humidity though. I got myself a new temperature uh, thermometer and, and hygrometer there. So uh, yeah, it's summer and my garden is transitioning. A lot of my spring garden crops are still in. And I originally began with a layout of my garden and began to plan with the things I wanted to grow. And this year I was so excited to grow tomatoes because last year I didn't get to grow tomatoes. My tomatoes were killed by aminopyrrolid herbicide damage brought in on hay that was used for mulch. So i uh, <clears throat> got a video on that, go check it out. But I, I planted a lot of different varieties of tomatoes this year. I started them from seed, uh, a few old favorites, but a whole lot of kinds that I, I hadn't grown before. And I also grew a whole lot of um, dwarf varieties and micro dwarf varieties. And I was really looking forward. I'm getting tomatoes, I'm finally into some tomatoes. I'm so happy. Some of my big, large tomatoes, like a Mana Orange, a Brandywine, uh, there's, I'm looking at my layout here, uh, Sunset's Red Horizon, uh, they're doing really well. Uh, Wood's Famous Brimmer, which used to be called, uh, it was a Russian variety, uh, doing very well. Uh, Black Crim looks like it's doing well. And I had a couple of cherries. The Blonde Kopfchen is doing very well, and Barry's Crazy Cherry is also producing like, like crazy. And both of those two, Blonde Kopfchen, which means little blonde head uh, girl, and Barry's Crazy Cherry. Both, are the, both of those are little yellow or golden cherry tomatoes and they're like candy and they're prolific. I'm eating those every day when I go out in the garden, so that's nice. A couple of tomatoes we're getting. A Zwichka. This is a Thorberg's Terracotta. I don't remember what these are. There's some of the last of my uh, dwarf varieties down there. Here's some more. Uh, that's another dwarf variety. These are Blancopchen. And that's a Brad's Crazy Cherry. Yeah. Nice, huh? But my micro varieties and my dwarf varieties did not do well at all. I did get some fruit from them. It was very nice. But um, I potted all of those along with my single seed challenge, which is a, a Black Beauty tomato. And I potted them in refreshed, recycled potting soil. And I think I introduced blight to them. Also, um, the heat really accelerated their demise. When the heat came on, it was unnaturally hot for a few weeks. While all the in-ground tomatoes and the potted tomatoes that were larger varieties did well, you know, standard size, not dwarfs or micro dwarfs, all the dwarfs and micro dwarfs seemed to uh, diminish in health. Eventually they all died and I'm, I've only got one or two left now. They did produce some fruit, they were the first to produce. But uh, yeah, they were also the first to die. I think their life cycle might be faster than a standard sized tomato. Uh, I'm not sure. But will I grow them again? Looking back on my spring garden, I might grow a few, but I won't grow as many as I've grown now. And if I grow them, I'm going to put them in the ground in fresh soil, not in potted soil. So my tomatoes this year, they bring me a lot of joy. My larger tomatoes are doing good, they're growing big, and I'm having a harvest. I'm eating tomatoes, delicious, wonderful tomatoes. Oh, that's so good. But um, next spring, what will I grow? Probably some standard varieties, some Romas, and some varieties that are heat tolerant. And I'm gonna kinda scale back on the exotic and, and unusual varieties that, that I like to grow, um, and grow some that I know are gonna be good producers. Okay, let's talk about squash. I grew lots of zucchini. And I grew a, a particular variety that I call the stripy guy. It's, a, a, no, it's from N Naples. But I got the, the seeds from Baker Creek and I started a lot of them. I had, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> I had four of those plants, actually five of them, in the ground in my garden. And then to supplement those plants, I also had two, maybe three plants of Calabacita squash, which is a Mexican gray squash. And they're both zucchini varieties. And I planted those as early as possible, which meant they didn't grow uh, early on real fast because it's still a little cool, but I wanted them in the ground early to try to beat the vine borers. And boy, did I beat the vine borers. Not one vine borer got those squashes this year. 
the powdery mildew got them, but I got a big harvest, a huge harvest. And those are one of those varieties that if you can get them in on time, they can produce a lot of food for you. And if you have a way to use that food, you can, you can pickle zucchini, you can dry zucchini. If you have a way to preserve that food and put it away, it can be a good staple crop for you because man, once they start producing, they don't stop. And I, I've been eating zucchini till now, I'm tired of it. But uh, yeah, will I grow squash again? You bet, every year I'm gonna grow squash. But what gets my squash every single year is either powdery mildew or vine borers. And they come and they destroy your plants, so you gotta get your harvest and expect them to be done before the summer kicks in. Really, late spring is when all those uh, challenges really come. I think what helped me this year with the vine borers is I interplanted my squash plants with my tomato plants and with my pepper plants and I had a whole bunch of other flowering plants and pollinator attracting plants. I had everything intercropped this year. I saw the vine borer moth come into my garden and they're beautiful. They're red. They've got this red flash on them. They're a beautiful moth. They're very exotic looking. I saw that moth come in and land on one of my zucchini plants and walk around and fly away confused. And I saw that, that moth fly around my garden. I tried to catch it and kill it, but I couldn't. But I didn't find any borers. I didn't find any eggs. I didn't find any holes. Nothing died. So that moth didn't lay any eggs in my garden. And I, I believe, I can't prove it, but I believe that intercropping everything helped. That's the purpose of intercropping. It's to confuse pests. And there's been scientific studies that show a pest that comes into a garden and, and is sensing that smell of that target species they're looking for, but it's mingled with all these other kind of smells, they get confused and they can't find their target and they move on. I have other squash too, let's talk about that. So every year um, I like to grow different kinds of squashes. Last year I grew in what's called a pumpkin pit. You dig a two foot hole anywhere in your yard and you fill the bottom of that hole with fresh compost, um, really gnarly compost. I put a dead rat in one last year. I put chicken legs and turkey legs and lasagna and mac and cheese leftovers in, in the ones this year. Um, and you put all that compost down in there and you fill it back in. You plant on that mound, you plant your squash seeds. And this works for squash, for pumpkins, melons, uh, any kind of cooker bit. And um, yeah, so last year I planted these pumpkin pits too late and the borers did find my beautiful pumpkin plants as they were sprawling and growing and once they found all that good wonderful compost down there they're one of the varieties of plant that actually thrives on fresh compost so they can take what they want they can avoid what they, what's too hot but uh, yeah they grew like crazy last year until the vine borers showed up and actually did get them this year i planted my pumpkin pits much earlier and so far so far they're doing really well uh, just over by my compost pile, I have a, a cantaloupe style melon. It's a hard shell cantaloupe and it's growing like wildfire. It's got some melons on it and I think I might be able to get some fruit on it. The only problem over there is it's kind of humid. It's hot over there. There's uh, water that's always flowing by there in the ground and there's powdery mildew over there too. Powdery mildew is everywhere. Uh, I also have two pumpkin pits on the side of my house with uh, uh, Kogigu pumpkins, a Japanese pumpkin. It's a Cucurbita moshata, which is a little more resistant to vine borer. And the reason it's more resistant is along the path of the vine, it can root at the nodes. <coughs> and you can help that rooting by putting soil over the nodes along the vine and encourage rooting. And so if the vine borer comes and kills off part of the plant, the rest of the vine still has roots and can, can continue to grow. And I've got five or six pretty good sized softball sized Kogigu pumpkins growing and I'm hopeful I'm 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 hopeful let's just put it that way uh, vine borers are around they will attack this plant but I hope they go for the easier targets and go over to my yellow squash and attack those so yeah that's a lot of squash that's a lot of pumpkins I also have in my new raised bed I plugged in some uh, table king squash cucurbita pepo and these are probably also vine borer uh, delicacies, but I've got some squash growing and who knows, I might get some. So that's all my squash varieties. Would I plant these again? I will always try to plant a pumpkin pit with a cucurbita moshata pumpkin because I love squash and I want to get these sweet, big pumpkins that store well. If you can grow pumpkins and you don't have a vine borer problem, that is a very good crop that will keep well, 
These things keep and they store well for six months, maybe a year. And it's a really good food crop. If you have the ability to grow them successfully, it's a good food crop, these, these pumpkins. All right, looking at my layout, let's talk about beans. I grew several kinds of beans this year. I grew dragon tongue beans. I grew Christmas tree lima beans on a trellis. And I grew uh, green beans. Um, it's, a, it's called a homestead green bean, but it's actually the old... Uh, it's not, it's not Blue Lake, I think they're Kentucky Wonders. They're a pole bean, they're a climbing bean, and they're doing great. I harvested a big handful of beans today, my first harvest, and there's tons and tons of flowers on there. So we'll be picking beans through the summer until the high heat really kills them off. So that's a very good production crop. I put in a lot of beans, I have a big long trellis of beans. I have some more in my little raised bed by my patio and I'm expecting to get a lot of beans off of that and we can eat green, my family loves green beans so this will be a good good crop for us. All right, I grew some dragon tongue beans as well. These were a bush bean, they're kind of a, uh, uh, a yellow bean that's purple spotted and it's kind of a wax bean but you can treat it like a green bean and I showed you in a video, I'll link up there, how I harvested and preserved them and cooked them and they're pretty good, they're pretty prolific. Um, I have left some of those on the on the plant now and uh, I'm gonna harvest my final harvest once they start to shell up and get kinda get kinda dry I haven't done it I've been saying I'm gonna do it in two videos but yeah that's a pretty good producer if you have a bush bean you want a quick turnaround a quick crop they grow fairly fast and they produce pretty early um, so those are those are um, the beans that I've been oh my lima beans let me talk about my lima beans I grew the lima beans kind of on a whim I wanted to show how to build a cheap trellis, a, tr a cheap string trellis, and boy did those lima beans take off. They're coming in now, there's tons of them. I need to start picking them to encourage uh, continued production. Uh, they're a very large lima bean, and um, yeah, they're the luscious, most green plant that I have in my garden now. So that's all the beans I've grown this year. I'm going to grow some cowpeas, but that's my summer garden. But looking back on spring, will I grow green beans again? You bet. The pole beans are outrageously productive and they're climbing all over my trellis and filling it up. All I need to remember is to build a taller trellis next year. How can I talk about beans and forget the long bean? I did a, a, a potted bean experiment this year. I showed you how to pot these uh, seeds and grow beans in a pot. Pole beans, long running, sprawling pole beans. And so I put in some Thai green yard long beans this year and I planted those seeds a whole bunch of them they were from 2014 so pretty old beans I only got five plants to come up and I think only four of them survived but that's all I needed those climbed up my teepee and began to produce for me and I've got a couple of pounds of long beans off them filling a, a gallon uh, a gallon ziploc bag in my refrigerator and they're still producing and that's one of my favorite beans in stir fry it's a wonderful delicious bean and they they put on more bean per, uh, I guess, per plant than like a green bean, like a green pole bean. You get a lot of production out of them. They're really good. They do, in my area, like cowpeas, attract aphids. And I get a lot of aphids on there, but they push through and they still grow. So long beans are actually one of the plants that I will almost always have in my garden if I'm looking for production and food production. Yeah, long beans. Next year I'm going to grow some dark colored ones though. I planted some crops this year that have turned out to be disappointments, but I don't think it's because of the variety. I grew some Armenian cucumbers or snake melon. They're a melon that tastes like a cucumber and they put on huge fruit and I've got some fruit off of it. Got quite a bit of fruit, but not nearly as much fruit as I would have uh, grown if I had grown pickling cucumbers. They just put on tons and tons of fruit and even though all my cucumbers eventually get wiped out by powdery mildew, I still get a ton of cucumbers when I grow regular pickling cucumbers. Um, my Armenian cucumbers have been decimated by powdery mildew. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make it much longer and I'm going to have to pull them out of there and put something else in their place, but yeah, powdery mildew really, really gets to cucurbits and these cucumbers are especially uh, susceptible. I don't know if I'm going to grow Armenian cucumbers again. I'll probably grow a pickling cucumber because I like crisp pickles. So yeah, cucumbers disappointment. Uh, potatoes. I grew potatoes this year for the first time and I learned my error about making uh, the, the potatoes come in indeterminates and determinants. In the UK they call them different. They're, I don't even know what the terminology is but it has to do with the long season or mid season or early season. I think that's what it's called. A determinate potato puts on its tubers 
all at once and that's it like like a determinate uh, tomato plant um, you don't hill that plant up so my red Lasota potatoes were determinate potatoes and I grew them they they grew lush they were beautiful they were wonderful but the yield wasn't as much as I thought I should get I probably got four or five times the amount of seed potatoes when I thought it should have been more like 10. Um, and I also had a little bit of potato scab uh, infect my potatoes as well. So that reduced my crop. We used up all of our potatoes in one big batch of roasted red potatoes. They were delicious potatoes. I really enjoyed them. Um, but would I grow those again? I don't think I will. The, the return wasn't what I expected. But what I will grow uh, again is uh, sweet potatoes. My sweet potatoes are taking off like crazy. We grew slips and I expect to get you know at least some sweet potatoes out of them but they'll grow through the summer. Um, I also have some russet potatoes I'm growing and I have healed those up. Spider mites swept through and killed off a bunch of the leaves on my on my russet potatoes but I killed the spider mites with neem oil and I've gone every uh, I've gone three times over the past week and sprayed those plants with neem oil. I think I got all the spider mites. I am getting new growth all along the stem. All this was killed off by spider mites, but uh, we sprayed, we killed them, we got them under control. So there's no spider mites anymore, but uh, yeah, they're starting to lay down. I don't know if I'm going to mess with traditional potatoes again. Um, I'll probably stick with sweet potatoes if I get a good crop this year. Every year I grow peppers, and I love growing peppers. In fact, I've got some peppers uh, from last year that are still growing. I like to grow jalapenos and spicy peppers, but I like to grow peppers to dry and ground into, uh, you know, spice. So I have cayenne peppers that I make specifically cayenne powder out of, and I have a cayenne plant that's doing quite well. I have two of them. I also have jalapenos, and I have some non-heat jalapenos called natapenos. I have some habanadas, which are a habanero pepper that doesn't have any heat. But in the garden, I also have some uh, large Antigua peppers, and they're a sweet pepper. They get very large, very red. They're like a, like a bell. And I have a couple of plants of that and a couple of different varieties of jalapeno out there and some very small um, biquinho peppers that are like a, like a habanero with no heat. They're a bird beak pepper. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the fruit from these peppers. They're growing very well. I've already harvested a lot of the fruit, but I like my jalapenos to turn red. I like them when they're red, so it's going to take a little time. They're all putting fruit on. Some of them are ripening, but for the most part, uh, I'm going to wait until they turn red. My um, peppers from last year are kind of like a hybrid uh, salsa chili pepper and some jumbo jalapenos, and they're doing well. Uh, they're doing uh, quite nicely, actually. So peppers are something I always grow. Peppers are always a heavy producer, and that's what works for me is pepper plants almost always and they grow through the summer they can also grow through the winter into next year so also in my spring garden are my herbs and spices and i've grown a lot of different varieties this year um, basil is easy to grow um, all my herbs and parsley and cilantro they're all doing just fine except for my dill i can't get my dill to grow i don't know why it just it's just they they refuse to come up they've, they've come up about an inch tall and stalled out and it's been a long time it might be too much water um, I've got chives growing. I've got a, you know a lot of little herbs and spices. Those are easy to grow. I also grew a lot of pollinator attractors this year: marigolds, uh, zinnias, cosmos, various flowers, and all of them are doing really well. Some of them are blooming at some time in my garden all the time. I've got safflower growing. <clears throat> I bought a bunch of flowers that I don't remember what they are just at the Home Depot and plugged them in along the borders. So there's lots of color in the garden. It's very easy to grow these things so I'm real pleased I think that's been helpful this year and I will, I will be growing pollinator attracting flowers all the time from now on I also had a holdover from my winter garden which was um, uh, onions that I planted and I've harvested all my onions but they were part of the spring garden and they took up that space at least through the first part of the spring but now the onions are out I had planned on planting some blue corn there some dwarf corn and um, that was kind of a, a summer garden, uh, my initiation of my summer garden. But a rodent came and ate all the seeds, so I've got more on order. I'll plug that in when it gets here. But that's it. Uh, spring garden review, that's what uh, worked out and what didn't work. <clears throat> so the best food for heavy production this year in my garden, let me find my notes here. Um, the long beans, 
the green beans and the squash. Absolutely. Beans and squash are heavy producers in a spring garden that you can produce a lot of food in a small space. The disappointments this year were my potatoes and my cucumbers, my Armenian cucumbers. I was really disappointed in those and my micro and dwarf micro variety tomatoes. They didn't do well and um, really a letdown because I had high hopes for those. So now that's what's worked and that's what didn't work. Spring garden, it's uh, going to kind of transition to summer now and I'm going to start plugging in summer crops, pulling out some squashes uh, that are the, the ones that are still there, plugging in peppers in their place. And we're going to grow some cowpeas, we're going to grow some sweet potatoes, we're going to grow some watermelon, we're going to grow um, corn, and that's going to be our summer garden, uh, along with whatever makes it from the spring and, and continues to produce. So, yeah, it's a good year. Well, there's the review of the garden. Thank you for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Like us on Instagram and Facebook. Follow us and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening.